but there's nothing I'm going to do which is in difficult, so difficult. So, inshallah, um, this is Najla and then wouldn't miss much out. Okay, let me start on this. And I'll recap it with them as well, so not an issue. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajeem Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya al-mursaleen. Muhammadin wa ahl bayt tayyibin al-tahirin al-ma'sumin. Sayyima al-imam al-muntadhar al-hujjat wa thani ashar. Ruhi wa arwahu al-alameen li-turabi maktamih al-fida. أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه المجيد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ربي زدني إلما صدق الله العلي العظيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته right um, today um, I'm gonna go just a few steps behind or back just to do some basic uh, comprehension and understanding for everyone okay um, Now, Sister um, Murak, can you come on the mic for a second, please? Yes, Sheikh. Salam alaikum. Right. Um, alaikum, Sheikh. Alaikum, Salam alaikum. Now, One second, I've just done something. I've sent too many messages in one group of yours. Let's delete it. Um, um, can you kindly read um, now what, one, what you see on the screen? These are, these are certain elements or certain particles which will make you understand the difference between a verb and a noun. So at the moment, um, from last week's class, which I had, I realized that there are certain things which I feel that is missing from yourself, have a better comprehension of verb conjugations itself. So therefore I'm doing it in a different fashion uh, or a different method so that everyone understands the difference between a verb and other prepositions as itself. Now, first of all, number one, now there are certain signs. Now there are certain signs in the Arabic language which allow a person to be able to distinguish between a noun and a verb. They are crucial so that you understand that you don't make a noun into a verb and a verb into a noun. So this these reasons, these signs are really important. So when you read the Quran, you will know immediately which is a noun and which is a verb itself. Now Sister Bismillah. Can you go through the list? Number one, it is preceded by. So, um, signs of a of an ism. It is preceded by alif lam, meaning al. For example, the man al rajulu. Correct. Number two. So, well, let, let, okay. let's, let's elaborate on this now. This itself, when I say that it is preceded by alif lam. Now, first of all, Sister Munar, what do you remember alif lam al? What does that denote? It means the. Exact. Correct. So, arrajulu, and why is it used with a noun? Uh, for a noun, uh, the, like for example, when we have al baytu, al kitabu, al kalamu, it yes. means uh, like common nouns. No, if, no, it's, no. if it's, if it's, if no, it's no. a specific noun, then no, we no. don't have the al. No, no, no. It, no, it's the other way around. So alif lam is a definite article. So when a definite article comes, it makes the noun into a definite noun. A definite noun is called a proper noun in, in, in other terms. Right. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Yes. So it makes it the man, meaning you're referring right. to a particular person itself, the man. But when right. you say without alif lam, when you say rajulun, it could be any man. It could be any man. It could be a white man, black man, Asian man, half caste, whatever caste. So that is a man. So there's no distinguish between an old, young, or any type of individual itself. So when you see Rajul, you're referring to a particular or a, a certain individual. So that's always a sign. So whenever you see Alif Lam with a, with a word, you will know that this is a 
noun, not a verb. Jazakallah. Next person will ask Sister Durdana. Thank you, Sheikh. You're welcome. Alaikum. Alaikum salam. Says Durdana. Next sign is that it says it accepts. It accepts Jarun. Jarun. Now, Jarun is when a noun receives a kasra tanwi or a kasra. Yeah. So whenever you see a noun, if it has a kasra or two kasras, this is, so when I mean it has a kasra or two kasras, is not the middle letters or the first letter. I'm talking about the last letter. Yeah. So the last letter of the word has a kasra. Mm -hmm. Kasra, yeah. Kasras. So for example, here it says fi beiti. Yeah. Fi beiti. So ignore the noon there. Ignore this noon. Uh, let me just paint it white. Ignore that. I won't be able to. Okay. So, fi beiti. Zaydi. Yeah. So, here in Zaydi's new house. So, you see the. Yeah. Yeah. So, fi beiti, Zaydi, al Jadidi. So, all three nouns are getting a kasra. Or even if we said fi baitin, in a house. So yeah. nouns itself receive kasra. Kasra or a kasra tenu. This is a sign of a noun. And a verb will never get a kasra at all. Okay, so mm -hmm. the last letter of a verb will never get a kasra or a kasra tanwi. Yeah, okay. Only yeah. noun. Yeah, that's right. That's the okay. second sign uh, of a noun. Now, the third sign of a noun, Sister, um, I, I don't know, if Sister Layla, would you be able to come or would you like yes. to listen? Yes, yes, Shaykh, Salaam Alaikum. Alaikum Salaam, would you be able to come or would you like to relax? Gigi, yeah, yeah, I can come. Okay, the third sign, can you read this third sign that uh, there is? Uh, Rajulan. Yep, and in English there is a Tanween. Uh, amen, right? Rajulan. Yeah. Amen, it's, it's, not, um, um, it's not definite. Correct. It's indefinite. it's indefinite and it is, uh, I don't know. Having a tanween at the end. There is a tanween uh, in the last tanween. letter. Yeah, it's a tanween. So it's a move. Um, what is Nakira. That? Nakira. 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 Yeah. It's Nakira yes. because it's not, uh, al. there's no al. Exactly. Right? So this is a sign of a noun. So all nouns. These are noun, yeah. Yeah, all nouns would get a fata, kasra, or a dhamma tanween. Uh -huh. So remember this point, dhamma, yeah. fata, or tanween, any type of tanween is a sign uh -huh. of a noun, not a sign of a verb, okay? Verb, yeah. So yeah. That's the third, third sign of yeah. a noun. Now, uh -huh. Jazakallah, thank you. Sister thank Kanwal you. Masrur, number four. Hello, assalamualaikum. Alaikum, assalamu alaikum. Uh, it ends with a round ta. Kalimatun. Kalimatun. So you will see, that, now this is another point you should remember, is that like we done the past tense verb and the present tense word, we never came across a time marbuta, a round ta at the end. So always you will see a round ta like kalimatun, a round ta, always with a noun. So a verb will never end with a round ta. Okay. So because a round ta is a sign of a female noun. Yeah. Is that clear? Yes. Brilliant. Jazakallah. Thank you, Sister Kulsum Bahmani. Sister Kulsum. You can unmute yourself first and then you'll be able to hear you. Sister Kulsum. Okay, if you can hear, okay, Tasneem iPad. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam. Uh, uh, now, the fifth one is it is it it is a dual Tasniyatun, Tasniyatun, Tasniyatun. Like Rojolan, Rojolani, two men, Rojolani. Rajulani, 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 Rajulani two correct. men. Mm -hmm. It's a plural. It's a dual. Yeah. It's a dual. It's, it's a plural. It's a plural. No, no. 
it's, no, a, it's dual. a dual. Yeah, number yeah. five is a dual. It's a yeah. dual. So whenever you have a noun, it will end with a alif and a noon with a kasra. So the alif and noon with a kasra is a sign of a noun, not a sign of a verb. Kasra. Not a sign of a verb. It's a sign of a noun. Yeah, yeah. So for example, um, <clears throat> when we, um, for example, this Rajulani, it always remains there. The Alif Noon or Alif Noon or the Ya Noon. So Alif Noon or Ya Noon always remained with the noun. But when they're like in, for example, in when we did like, uh, how do you say you are hitting, Sister Tasneem iPad? How do you say yeah. you are hitting? Yadribu is he is hitting. How do you say you are hitting? Um, Z, Z, Z. We tell the ribu. Hitting. What is hitting then? Tell the ribu. Z, Z, Tell the ribu. Tell the ribu. That's the ribu. That's the ribu. That's the ribu. And then how do you say they two are hitting? That's that's ribu. That's rubani. Okay. Okay. One second. One second. Uh, this one. Yeah. Just one sec. So, for example, over here, Tadribu, Tadribani, yes? Yeah, Tadribani. Now, here, when we have Tadribani, we have Tadribu. How many people is Tadribu? Anta Tadribu. You are hitting, correct? Mm -hmm. Now, that's one person who's hitting, correct? Mm -hmm. And if there's two people are hitting, what do you say? Anta Tadribani. Correct. Now, let me go forward now. You know the Amr, the imperative? Yeah. What happens in the imperative? How do you make the imperative from Tadribu? You remove the ta, yep. and you add alif. Yep. And then you have uh, zamma at the end, so adribu. Idribu. No. Yeah, the last letter becomes silent. We look at the ra, if it's with a kasra or a fata, the alif, the hamzatul wasl, gets a kasra. If it's with a zamma, the hamzatul wasl gets a zamma. So tadrib, tadribu becomes idrib. What about tadribani? Isriba, isriba. What happens here? Um, the, the te gets changed to a alif. Uh, it's joined with the with the with the za is is, and then it's a kasra at for the re, mm -hmm. and that ba ba, ba ba and alif and noon gets changed to ba azriba. Azriba, correct. Now you will see the noon with the kasra has been dropped. Dropped, yeah. Correct. Yeah. So the, the reason why I, sh I went to this handout is just to show that when we do the, the verbs, when we are doing the verbs and we are doing the dual in the verbs, the alif and the noon with the kasra, both of them are not the sign of dual. Mm -hmm. Listening? Both of them are not the sign of dual. Mm -hmm. The alif is the sign of dual. Oh. Okay? okay, because okay. Uh, alif is a sign of dual, and the noon with a kasra is just to show that the verb is in its original original form. That's where it shows that is it nothing else. Okay. Okay. So that's the reason why it, when we do idrib. So, for example, can you see tadribu has a dhamma? Yes. Yeah. Now to show tadribu. Um, this state of a dhamma to show this with the the last letter of the bar the bar has a fata correct and an alif yeah now to show a dhamma there is impossible so you cannot show the dhamma there on the bar because it has an alif after it so the harakat suitable is an alif so that's why they changed it to a tadriba 
Now, to show the sign of the dhamma that the verb is, is an original state, there's nothing which has which has come before it to change the tense of the verb. So they, this noon with a kasra and this noon with a fatah, this is showing or re representing the dhamma on the singular, meaning that this verb is not preceded by any particle which will make it into sukun. Like, can you see the sukun here? Yeah, hazrib. Yeah, right. so it's showing that. And also, yes. as you, I will explain later, the, the, the present tense verb can also come with a sukun and also can come with a fatah. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So this noon with a kasra and the noon with fatah is just denoting and representing that this dhamma, this noon, this noon with a kasra is representing the dhamma, which is shown in the singulars. Because in singular... Yes, can you explain it again? It's too complicated. That's fine. Sheikh, sorry, I have one question. Tazriban is the dual, right? Yes, yes. True, right? Yes. So, um, Sister Najla. And, yes. And now, Tadribu is a... Now, Tadribu. Now, yes. this is the present tense verb. Okay? Yes. Now, in the present tense verb, in the singular, we have a dhamma, correct? Yes. We have a dhamma <laughs> there itself. Now, this is the present tense verb's original format or original mm -hmm. uh, form. It's that the singulars, the singular verb, tadribu, yadribu, should have a dhamma at the end. Yes. Correct? Now, yes. in the dual, in tadribani, yes. and in tadribuna, the masculine, and the dual itself, to show that this is in the original form, there's nothing which is preceding it from changing in its original tense, uh -huh. this moon with the kasra is substituting the dhamma, which is on the singular, on the last letter. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this noon with the fatah is doing the same thing. So in the it's plural... The dhamma on the yeah, that's right. That's right. So mm -hmm. the, like this is... You know, we say uh, the, um, this dhamma... So this dhamma in the in the dual is represented by the noon with a kasra, uh -huh. and in the plural, in the masculine plural, the noon with a fatah is representing okay. the dhamma itself, and that's mm -hmm. the reason why, um, and that's the reason why, when we change tadribu to the imperative, the amr, we make the last letter with the dhamma to a sukun, uh -huh. and it becomes idrib. Why? Because now. We are making the imperative in the is not anymore the present tense. Now it's an imperative. It's a different tense of a verb. So wow. that's been, that has been highlighted by having a sukun at the end itself. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then, <clears throat> then when we go to Tadribani dual, we actually remove the noon with a kasra, uh -huh. just remove it and make it idriba. Uh -huh. So it's the alif here, which is the sign of dual. Alif here is the sign of dual, not the noon with a kasra. Mm -hmm. In the verbs, only the alif is the sign of dual. Okay. Is that clear? And in tadribuna, the same thing. Same thing. The noon is removed. And just to protect the wow, being confused in, for and, can being confused for and, they add an alif to block it. Mm -hmm. To make it understand, it's tal idribu. Yes. And then in tadribina, which becomes the idribi, we will remove the noon to show that the present tense is changed to the imperative. And that's the reason why the noon has dropped. Yes. And in tadriba, tadribani, again, the noon with the kasra is dropped. And in, tad, in, in only in the females, in, in the third person, yadribna, hunna, yadribna, and antunna, tadribna, the noon here, which comes with a fatah, this is not the sign of the dhamma, but this is the actual uh, pronoun uh, uh, attached, suffix attached to the verb, which represents they, um, they all or you all females or they all females. Yazribna and Tazribna? Yes. So that's the reason why when we make the imperative, 
this noon remains. Idh ribna. Okay. Is that clear? Yes. Brilliant. Um, Sister uh, Tasneem and the rest of the class, I've tried to make it as clear as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Sheikh. Is that clear for everyone? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yes. Sister Kultum, is that clear for you as well? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Sheikh. Okay. So the reason why I'm doing this is there's a reason why. And I will explain that reason in a few minutes. It was trying to make you understand that when we talk Tathniya dual, when we do nouns, when we do the nouns, Rajulani, okay, Rajulani, this Alif and the Noon together here is the sign of dual. Both of them, when it comes with a noun, both of Alif and Noon, both of them are the sign of dual, not the Alif by itself. With the verbs, it's the Alif, not the Noon with the Kasra. This noon, this noon will never drop. This noon will always remain with the, the noun itself, with a verb. Um, in Tadribani, it drops, but this one never drops. That's the reason why I was comparing it with a verb to under, make you understand. Okay, Sister Kutum, number six, please. So, number six. Is the um, okay. Jam, uh, Jama, so it uh, it is plural, so mm -hmm. it's rijal. Yeah, so yeah. all nouns. So when you see the word rijalun, so you see it as a plural, and also it has a tanween. So you see there's two signs of a noun with this word, and you know immediately that this is a noun, not a verb. Not a verb. So, Sheikh, I have a question here. Even with the duo, uh, when we are making it um, um, specific, you know, like when we use uh, al, so yep. we, so you can use al uh, rajulani as well. That's a good question. Yes, you can because we only we, means means two men. It's not referring to a particular individual. It's two men. Yeah. So, yes you, yes, you can add ar rajulani. Yes, you can. Okay, thank you. Good question. That was a good question that you nakira, tried to. Right? Sheikh, it's in Nakira, right? Yes, it's Nakira. It's indefinite. Now, the other thing you need to remember here, ar rajulu kawiyun. So, so ar rajulu kawiyun. So, you will see that ar rajulu has the alif lam. And now, uh, so whenever a noun has alif lam, it can come as a subject or a uh, or it can come as a fa'il. So uh, nouns can come as a mubtada because uh, a verb will never come as a mubtada. Do you remember that? I told you that before. I said whenever a noun starts a sentence, it will be a mubtada. And so a mubtada meaning, so whenever there's a noun, it comes, the, type, the, the position in the sentence is given to, is called mubtada. Musnad ilay means to whom something is being related to. So when we say arrajalo qawiyun, the man is strong, the relation of the word strong is being given to the man itself. And when we say, and also um, fa'il, fa'il is a doer. You, okay, question. Can a verb be a doer of another verb? Can a verb be a doer of another verb? If I said yadribu, yansoro together, can one verb be the doer of the other verb? No. Exactly. So whenever you have a verb, you require a doer. And a doer is normally a, a person, and a person is a noun. So a name of an individual is called a noun, and all human beings are under the category of human beings. And human beings are not verbs, they are objects or human or living, living human beings are termed in the classification of language as nouns itself, when we are referring to them. Is that clear? Yes. So nouns can be either subject or they can be doers of verbs itself. I hope that's clear for everyone. 
Is that clear for everyone? Yes. What is Musnad Ilahi? Musnad, that's what I, I said. So, you know the word Sanad, certificate. Uh -huh. So Musnad Ilahi, to, to whom something is related to. So when we say Arrajul Qawiyun, the word mm -hmm. strong is being related to the man itself. <laughs> so when, okay. we say, when we say Sat, Jalasa, the action of sitting is being related to Zaid. That's yeah. what Muslim Ilay means. So uh, it could so Arrajulu here being strong is being related to the man. When we see Jalasa Zaidun, uh, sitting is being related to Zaid itself. That's what it means. So this is the this is the same way like I learned uh, when there is a mutada, there is a khabar. Correct. So like Arrajulu Kaviyun, <laughs> the man is strong. Mm -hmm. And but this is the uh, this is the jumla ismiya, but jalasa zaidun is jumla failure, right? Correct, correct, correct. Okay. One is a verbal, one's a nominal sentence, and the other is a verbal sentence. Correct. Jake, I have a question. So exactly for that, for the jumla failure, yeah. can you fit and can you make it into a um, jumla ismiya by putting zaidun first? Yes, you can. Yes, okay. you can. Yes, Thank you. Can. Okay. Next person, um, Sister Wajda. Yes. Number eight. I'm sorry, I, I came late because I was uh, in a phone call overseas and then I so was uh, praying. Okay, so what are we doing, number eight? So what it's we're doing, so let, me, let me recap everything for everyone. Give me two seconds. That's why, no problem. Now, number one, I'm talking about signs because... What, what, the last lesson that we had, I feel that I need to teach everything in a different perspective. So I'm just trying to teach the same things from a different angle. So I'm talking about how to distinguish between a noun and a verb. So I mentioned the first sign of a, of a, of a noun. It comes with alif la. So you cannot see, you cannot, yadrib, you cannot say al yadribu. The, the definite article, the, only comes with nouns itself. The man the mosque, the table. So that is the first mm -hmm. sign. Number two, jar. Fi bayti, zayd. Ignore the noon. Zaydil al jadidi. In Zaid's new house. So only nouns get, the last letter of a noun will get a kasra. A verb never gets a kasra itself. Number two. Number three was tanween. All nouns can get a dhamma, fata, or a kasra tanween. A verb will not be yadribun, that's incorrect. It will be always be yadribu. So that's the reason why I gave the example, rajulun, a man. Then number four, it ends with a ta'i marbuta, a round ta. So you will never see a verb, past tense, present tense, ending with a ta'i marbuta, because ta'i marbuta is a sign for a female noun, kalimatun. So these are not verbs you, you're telling me. These are these are nouns, correct? Nouns, right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then five is dual. Whenever a noun, whenever there's a noun, it always ends with an alif and a noon with a kasra. So alif noon with a kasra is a sign. Alif noon or ya noon with a kasra. So a noun, dual of a noun can either come with alif noon or ya noon. Okay. And then number six would jump plural. Nouns come as plurals. And rajalun, um, you will see it has a tanween as well. And you will see the pattern of fi'alun. And this will make you understand that this is a noun, plural, not a verb itself. Yeah. And because verbs are different, they come differently. Can and then, rujulun, yeah. rujulun? No. no, rajalun. Rajalun. Yeah. And then number seven, I mentioned nouns can either be mubtada or can be fa'il. In arrajulu, it's a mubtada. Jalasa zaidun. Zaid is coming as a fa'il. A verb can never become a fa'il. A doer. Okay. So jalasa, jalasa is a fail here and Zaid is fa'il, right? Correct. Correct. Okay. And number eight, go ahead. So number it is nine, eight, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it is Kitabun Zaidin, mm -hmm. Book of Zaid. So Kitabu Zaidin, book of Zaid. It, it's yeah. showing the possession, possession of the book. 
Yeah, so a verb cannot be a possession of someone. You can't say Yadribu Muhammad, Yadribu Muhammadin. Um, it never happens. Always possession. Right. I am a book of Muhammad, pen of Ali, and so forth. It's both the, the mudaf and the mudaf ilay always will be nouns itself. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's number eight. Number, Jazakallah. Now, mm-hmm. number nine, I'm going to ask Sister Nazneen Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. It Rajul. is uh, Mosuf, uh-huh. number nine. It is Rajulun Tawilun. So, Tall men. So where is the Mosuf? Mosuf is the noun which has been described or been depicted with a certain quality. So what? who is being depicted or who is being described? The men. Uh, Rajulun. Yeah, absolutely. So Rajulun is being described. And he's called the Mosuf. Only nouns will become Mosuf, the, the thing which is being described. Correct. Jazakallah. Any uh, okay? Any question from anyone so far? Okay, not. Sister Najla. Bismillah. Yes. It is Munada. Yes. Ya Rajulu, O mm-hmm. man. Yeah. So the word Ya. Only comes with verb as with the noun itself. You cannot say ya ya darebo ya yansuru. You cannot say that. It always comes with nouns. Oh person. Oh Muhammad. Oh Ali. So mm-hmm. ya is a sign, uh, which when you read it, the reason why I'm teaching you this is that when inshallah when we start reading books in about Quran, fiqh, mantik, or asul or akhlaq books inshallah soon, um, we will use these signs. For us to be able to distinguish between a verb and a noun, inshallah. Okay. So, ya itself is a sign of a mm-hmm. noun. So, whatever comes after ya will never be a verb, will always be a noun. No. Okay, brilliant. Num- uh, 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 and Dr. Saab, is he there? Number 11. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Allah. Number 11. Rajulaini. So, Musagar. Musagar in Arabic, in English is called a dimin. In English, we don't really have this now. Um, in English, Musagar is called a di- diminutive noun. Diminutive noun, what that means, it means that something which is small. So when you say Raj or Rajailun, it means a small man. For example, you know, you probably heard of this word. Um, has anyone heard of the word Buhayratun? <coughs> Buhayratun. Bahrun. Buhayr, or buhayr, it means a small pond. So anything on the pattern of, uh, there's a pattern, there are, I'll give you, inshallah, we'll do them later. In the Arabic language, there are certain patterns which will indicate upon small, like the word uh, sakina or sukaina, for example, sukaina. Sukaina means someone uh, Musagar gives two meanings There's two reasons you have a diminutive noun One to indicate something which is small Or the other reason you have a diminutive noun To indicate affection or love For a, uh, for a certain individual itself So that's called Musagar And it always comes Always the first letter comes with the, uh, On the path of Fu'ailun I'll do this inshallah next time uh, With this, uh, more details Diminutive nouns and doctor number 12. Okay. When su. Yep. Makiyun. 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 Yeah. Makan. A makan. So what yes. it means is that whenever you have nouns, will never have a ya with a dhamma at the end. Ya with a shadda at the end. So whenever you add a ya with a shadda at the end, it, in English, it's called the, the relative noun. The relative noun. A relative noun is that when a person ascribes himself uh, to a certain country, I'm American. So, or an Inglesi, an a Pakistani, an a Hindi, an a Iraqi, an a an a Irani. So when you have that ya at the end, that comes only with nouns, never with verbs itself. It's good. Yeah. Okay. Is this clear? Is this clear for you? All of these twelve. So these are the twelve signs. Of knowing, and so this would really help you when you read the Quran next time. Um, look at these signs, uh, and this will make you understand which one, which letter is a verb, and which letter is a noun. Okay. That's good. Okay. Now, Jazakallah. Please, Sheikh, did you send us this page? Yes, I did. 
I, I've, I've sent it. If you look in your group, uh, just before uh, during the lesson, when when you went to pray namaz, I actually sent this. So this is the last handout which I just sent at ten past eleven. Mm -hmm. So you, mm -hmm. you you have the recording and you have this handout which I've sent to you, uh, and this is really helpful because what I'm gonna what I'm trying to do is I've decided that the first sixteen uh, we've done six verbs already. I'm going to do with, in book three. I'm going to do only the ne the next ten. I'm do, I'm going to make you master the next ten verb conjugations, and then inshallah, uh, the remaining ones I'll do that in book four inshallah. Sure. So, uh, and then I'm going to do something else with yourselves as well. I'm going to also now the other thing. How many states are there for a a noun? Do you remember how many states I mentioned? So when I mean states of a noun, I mean in the last harakat of a noun. Correct. And the tanmin or just a single. Correct. It's called marfu, mansub, and majroor. Mm -hmm. Now, when we go to verbs, the verbs do not have the exact same states as a noun. So that's the reason why. Um, I'm going to go. What I'm going to, I'm going to well, I'll ask you after I've taught them. How do you find this approach? But let's let's go through the approach and see how it goes. Now, alamatul fil. Now, these things. What I'm going to explain today. These things it will help you to understand when you read the text. That so sometimes we don't know. Sometimes we don't know the meaning of a verb, and we don't know if it's a verb or a noun. These things will allow you to finalize or define. First of all, whether this is a noun or a verb from knowing these rulings, which I'm, I have shared with you today. So I'm going to ask Sister Salma. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Salma. Wa alaikum salam, Sheikh. How are you? Alhamdulillah, and how are you? Alhamdulillah. Um, so over here, alamatul fil. So the number number one. It is preceded by qad. Correct. Example, qad kh uh, kharaja. Okay. He has gone out. Yeah. Qad kharaja, it means indeed he has gone out in the past tense. So whenever Qad comes, Qad aflah al-mu'minun, Qad aflah man tazakkaha wa dhakar asma rabbihi fasallah. So whenever Qad comes, it indicates the meaning of indeed. Okay? Okay. Yep. And number two, Sister Mansura. Sister Mansura is not here today. Okay, no problem. Uh, then Sister, um, who has not had a chance yet? Sister Parveen Naqavi. She's not there. Um, let's go from the bottom now. Sister Dordana Zadi. G. Next one. Begin one. Yep. It Number is two. preceded by Sa, Seen. Yes. So. Sayakh um, Ruju. Yeah. He will soon go out. Correct. So Seen itself indicates upon future. Future tense. That's Ruju. Sayakh Ruju. So he will soon go out. So whenever you see a scene, and there's a ya or a ta or alif or a noon, you will understand that this is the present tense verb itself. So you have the scene and Sister Durdana, what's number two? Number three? Number three. So number it, three. Is, it is preceded by sofa. Sofa yakhruju. Yeah. He will go out after a while. Yeah, exactly. So, 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 so far, so he will, he will, so, he will go out. So, both of them are future tense. Yeah, future tense. Okay. And the fourth is it is preceded by just Yeah, this is that's the reason why I was trying to explain. So, the present tense just can mean. come. Just mean. So it is preceded by harfi jazm. Harfi mm -hmm. jazm means a particle which will make the singular verb into what? Into, into a sukun. So yeah. lam yakhruj. Lam yakhruj. So whenever lam comes in front of present tense, it makes the present tense meaning to past tense. Can you see it? He did not. Go out. So lam yakh known means he is going out. Now here he did not go out. 
it gives the meaning of the present tense to past tense. Yeah. Is that clear? So if there's mm -hmm. lum in past tense? Sorry, Sister Leila? If it's lum, then it goes past tense? Yeah, it changes the meaning to past tense. Okay, okay. Yeah, so whenever lum comes with present tense, it changes the meaning to past tense. Okay. Jazakallah, thanks to Durdana. Also, it's saying uh, like it's made to negative. Yes, he did not. That's right. But yeah. of course, yeah, he did not go out. Yes. Of course, it's past tense and negative. Correct. Um, I have one question for yes. number three. The sofa will only come for the present tense, right? Yes. So you use it. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, so and sofa yakhrujo, all of them come with because we're talking about future, it comes with pa present tense, not with past tense. Past tense is already done and dusted. Right. Next one, I'm gonna ask um, um next person is sister steam. <clears throat> number five. Okay, number five. Yeah. It, it is preceded preceded by a harf. Okay, where is it? Number five. It's preceded by harfu nas 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 nasbin. Harfu nasbin. Yeah, harfu uh, nasbin. I'll yeah. explain this. Harfu so harfu jazam is that so harfu jazam. What it does. The singular verbs, yakhrojo, akhrojo, yakhroj, takhrojo, these are the singulars. They will get a sukoon on the last letter. Normally, the present tense verb, last letter should have how dhamma, yes? As I was explaining early on, all of the present tense singular verbs should have a dhamma. Yes. Definitely. But when lam comes, it gives it a sukoon at the end. Yes. Okay. And lan, yeah, yeah. And lan itself, lan harfin harfun nasab. Now harfun nasab, what this means, it means that the last letter in the singular verbs, rather than getting a sukun or a dhamma, it now gets a fatha. It gets a is it called mansub? Yes, no. yes. It's called mansub. The state of the noun if verb is called mansub. So lay yahruja, whenever lan comes. It will give future negation. Future negation. And the translation will be Lan Yahruja. He will never, Sister Dasneem? He will, he will never go out. So Lan is used for negation. Yep. And how do you read the Arabic? Lan? Lan, lan Yahruju. Lan Yahruju. He will never go no, out. Lan Yahruja. Oh, yeah. Lan Yahruja. Lan right. Yahruja. Lan Yahruja. Right. So the ver the word lan made it mansu, right? Yes, correct. Okay. Correct. The, okay. No, the the, it's so the meaning of a uh, never, song. never, never. No. Lan gives me you never. Lan ne lan. Is is it is there any meaning for like like individual word like lam? Lam is lam. Lam is called. Yeah, it's called harfi jazam. Lam is called harfi jazam, and lan is called harfi nasab. Nasab harfi nasab. Okay. The harfi nasab means negative. No, harf means particle. Nasab means that particle which gives the the verb itself a fatah. Mansub. Yeah, okay. makes it mansub. Okay. So I just noticed that lam yakhruj also yes. it made it uh, harfi jazam jazam means sukoon yes, so it yakhruju yakhruj very right. good yep thank you yakhruja lam yakhruj the top one harfi yeah. jazam jazam means sukoon when the lam yakhruj okay okay it's like lam yalat yes it's a kanwal masrur that's what i'm doing what i thought i thought let's uh, make your a uh, vision for the Arabic language, especially the verbs and all different types of words. More, um, more uh, give you more of a spectrum. So I want to give you a wider spectrum when you're reciting the Quran and really that you understand the different types of present tense verbs. So that's the reason why I'm going to teach you the, the ten verb patterns, but from a complete different perspective now. Yeah, mashallah. Thank you, Jazakallah. But is, so far, so inshallah, um, give me some more time and inshallah, okay, I will explain some things, a few more things before I end the class. Um, Sister Najla, can you come back on the mic? Doctor? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. 
Um, how are you feeling, by the way? I'm better, except for the lingering cough. <laughs> yeah, it, the, the cough. in a way, I'm happy I got it because I'm around sickness all the time. This way, at least I have immunity. Yeah, yeah. Or uh, 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 the other benefit is uh, um, exactly the immunity. Um, the other thing, uh, hot drinks. Uh, or Harry or a doctor, you, uh, you know better how to control the coffee. Yeah. But, uh, but there are some remedies for the cough as well. Yeah. So number just, six. And Zameer. Yeah, number six. It has a hidden Zameer. pronoun. The Mirun is a pronoun. So okay. kh- Kharaja. He left. He went he out. Went. Yeah. So verbs, verbs, especially he went has a hidden verb in it. Hidden, sorry, hidden pronoun. Kharaja. Nouns never have this quality. Nouns will never have a pronoun hidden in it. It's only the verbs, especially kharaja, has that quality. Mm-hmm. That's a sign of a verb itself. Number seven, Sister um, Najla. It is, it is an imperative. Amar. Yes. Uh, go out. Akhruj. Ukhruj. Ukhruj. Yeah. Ukhruj. Um, this is a noun, a noun, a, a, a verb. A verb will have a imperative. Noun will yeah. never have a imperative. Imperative, correct. Jazakallah. Thank you, Sister Salma. Can I request you eight and nine? It is a prohibitive. So, example is la takhruj. Do not go out. Okay, now. I've got a question for an open question for everyone. Now, can you see La is coming here now? La Takhruj, do not uh, go out. Yes? It's a negation, right? Negation. Negation, yes. Negation, La Takhruj. Now, La Takhruj, what's happened? Now, which category does the verb come under now? Because La is coming. It's changing the harakat of a certain letter. Which one of these does it come under? Negation. Amar, right? Yeah, Amar. It's no, no. Can you see the Amar? The last letter has a sukun. Yes. Mm-hmm. Correct. Nahi has also a sukun. Correct. Yes. So these will come under the category of. Arfejas. Yes, it comes in that, under that category, meaning that the state of jazm. Yes. So sometimes yeah. you have sometimes you have the lam, and sometimes la. Some eggs, ahsanti. You've understood. Sometimes you have lam to make the present tense into majum to make it silent, and sometimes the imperative ukhruj. Imperatives make the present tense into a sukun, and also the negation command when you have la. So whenever la comes in front of present tense and you want to say do not go out, the singular verb will become with a shikun. Is that clear? Shik, is the la more forceful, like an order? Yes. So it is literally, Amr is an order and the opposite of order is a a negation command, uh, making it prohibited upon someone. Is that clear? Thank so, you. Have I made myself clearer so far? Yes. Brilliant. Yes, yeah. Okay. Finally, number nine. Name of Nahi? Yeah, Lai, it's called Lai Nahi. Lai Nahi, okay. Lai Nahi. And finally, um, Sister. Um, it has. Sheikh, uh, yeah. me? Salma? It yeah, yeah, finish off. Okay, it has tasakin at the end. So akalat, she ate. Yeah, so when every, now this tasakin, this tasakin is a sign of female, correct? Yes. So remember, now tell me now, I've done the lesson already, I've taught you now, there, what here, the tasakin is a sign of a female verb, okay? A female verb. What was the sign for a female for the nouns? Was it a flat? Now this ta, remember this ta. This ta is called the flat ta. It's called it's the boat. Alif and the open ta. Exactly. Ta. Ah, Santi, Sister Kanwal. The flat ta 
you know, the other word, the Arabic term, this is called ta'i mabsuta. Mabsuta means the long ta. Is the sign of a verb, and ta'i marbuta, the round ta, the football ta, or the, the round ta, is the sign for a? Noun. Noun. Excellent. Is Did everyone understand today's lesson 100%? Yes. 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 Okay, that's brilliant. <laughs> now, this is only the first part of this lesson. <laughs> this is only, only the first part of the lesson. I've got another. Yeah. Yes. Who's got the question? So I've got another two hours to teach you, which I can't teach you now. Of course, you'd be tired. But I'm going to just before I end the session, I'm just going to introduce the next session. Okay. I'm just going to introduce the next session. What I'm going to what I'm going to do next week. Okay. Give me one second. I'm just going to briefly explain, and then I want you to read this in your own time. Remember I spoke about the present tense? I said the present tense, um, it can sometimes come with a sukun, it can sometimes come with a fatah, and it sometimes and the original state for the present tense is a, the last letter should have a, dhamma, yaktubu. Yes? Yes. And I said taktubu. In the singulars, okay? Mm -hmm. And over here, it says, Alamatu Rafihi. Raf itself means the actual nominative case, meaning the case when the singular verb should get a dhamma. Yes? So the original tense for the present tense is that the singulars get a dhamma. And to show yaktubani, yaktubani is in its original state. The verbs original, all the verbs should have a noon of the kasra in the jewel and a noon of the fatah in the plural. This is the original state for the present tense. And then this noon with the kasra, as I said earlier, is the sign of the present tense being in its original form. Because when the other signs come, like harfi jazm and harfi nasab, these signs here are. What happens to them? Masroom. Are removed. Remo removed. Yeah, look over here. Like the imperative. Like, because the singular has a sukun, idharib, it should be in tadribani. When we do the imperative, the noon is dropped, becomes idhri. Ba. So the alif is the sign for dual and the wow sign for plural. Exactly. Excellent, Sister um, Ultum. <laughs> is it making more sense now for everyone now? Yes. Yes, Alhamdulillah. Right. But that, that's the, the reason why I'm doing it this way is because um, the other different 10 patterns, um, I have to... Now, this I will explain this next week. I've sent this handout, and it explains everything here. What is... Which nouns is representing the Dhamma, and so forth. And, and it says over here... As I explained to Sister Najla, this form does not change. And it does not change any of the three states. Okay, this is one thing I'm going to do next week with you. Next one I'm going to also explain is this. You know, you know this the Sunday class which I was teaching just before. Um, just before the Christmas break. Mm. Now, in English, can you see the yaktuba? Can you see this yaktuba? Yes. What is happening to the bar here? It's open to everyone. Anyone can come on the mic. Yaktuba, what's happening here? It has a fata. Yeah, it's a fata. Sorry, fata. fata. Yeah, so when a noun gets a fata or a fata tanwi, it's called the accusative case. It's called the, when a noun gets a fatah or fatah tanwin, it's called the accusative case. However, when a noun is getting a fatah, it's called not accusative case. This is the new term you need to learn. It's called a subjunctive case. Is that, or the, or the verb? Only for the verbs. For the verbs. So it's when yeah. the verb fata, then it is subjunctive. Subjunctive. In Monsub, right? In Arabic? Yeah, in Monsub. Yeah, that's right. In Arabic, it's called Monsub. 
and shows with the ex okay mental inshallah i'll do that next week and finally now a, 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 can you see this yaktub mm -hmm. what's happening here yes what's happening here the bar has a it has a sukun. Yeah, the bar has a sukun. Yeah. Now, when the bar has a sukun in Arabic, this is called Just, the Jassif case. When, when, uh, yeah, Jassif, Majzoom. Majzoom, yes. Majzoom, okay? Mm -hmm. So here you will see the noons are removed. Can you see any noon there? All the noons are removed now. Oh. So when, for example, lam comes, like lam yalid, a sister, um, Kanwal, I think sister Kanwal said, lam, yad, lam yalid. Yes. Well, lam yulad. The dal is silent again. So this is what I'm trying to teach you. Teach you, make you understand that the present tense is, because I taught you verbs, uh, nouns before, I want you to first be aware of the present tense, different uh, states. And I'm going to go, go through these each, give you examples from the Quran, and then, inshallah, start our journey again on the four-letter verbs, the five-letter verbs, and the six-letter verbs, inshallah. So, Sheikh, Lam Yalid, Lam Yulad, all this is just you, right? Yes. Okay, thanks. Kol Majzoom. Fe'li Mudhari Majzoom. Right. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa jil farajahum. I have given you quite a bit of work today uh, to absorb. Um, Inshallah, I'll, I'll try to make it simple as possible and easy as possible. How was it for everyone? Manageable? Yes, Alhamdulillah. Yes, it was manageable. Thank you. Okay, that's brilliant. Okay, that's really good. So, Inshallah, we will do, um, I'll continue this next week, give you more examples so you understand this and you understand that what are the different particles and uh, things which will come in front of present tense and make the noun in whether the noun the person the verb gets a fata or a sukun uh, and i'll explain them for you as well inshallah okay so this is the beginning i may take up to three sessions that this is really important because it will make your quran reading much more fruitful as well inshallah make you a better understanding as well inshallah okay of the present tense verbs okay, any question you. any question from anyone Any questions? No? Okay, okay. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajjil farajahum. Allahumma kulli waliyika al-hujjat bin al-hassan salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaih. Bihadhi al-sa'a wa fi kulli al-sa'a. Waliyan wa hafidhan wa qa'idan wa nasirah. Wa dalilan wa ayna hatta tusqinahu arvaka tawa wa tumatti'ahu fiha tawila. واجعلنا من انصاره وشيعتك وجندك برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم صل على محمد وال محمد واجل فرجهم so inshallah um hope this was helpful and inshallah we'll continue this and inshallah once i finish this uh, it'll be interesting to see how you find it and how what was your view on this as well inshallah okay thank you so, so much thank you. take care thank you. so inshallah the, uh, tomorrow before everyone leaves there is a Dwaye Joshin Kabir program. Six, um, what time is it going to be? Um, 1 p.m. New York time tomorrow. So 1 p.m. New York time. Um, message me if you haven't got, the, if you're not in the ladies Majalis group. Uh, best of you, and I'll send you the link uh, for the Dwaye Joshin because many people are ill in America, UK, COVID and other illnesses. So I thought,